Hello everyone, back again here with another long-awaited thing uh, to model railroading, uh, especially for Pennsylvania Railroad fans like myself, and that is these Pennsylvania Railroad Fleet of Modernism cars. Um, and the reason they're called Fleet of Modernism uh, pertains to the paint scheme. So it uses a uh, different font and also different coloring on here. So most Pennsylvania Railroads just plain Tuscan with gold writing. Uh, this is actually kind of more like a two-tone. Uh, the color here on the bottom and basically everything but that middle strip is more of a... It's not quite a bright red, but it's kind of between red and Tuscan, whereas the middle part's more of their traditional Tuscan. So, what's significant about these is that nobody's really ever done these cars before in HO scale. Um, the Walthers did some of the Pullman cars like this one here they did maybe two or three of those uh, branch line did some of the heavyweight Pullman cars that have this scheme on them uh, model power in the 80s had a three car set with some F7s that were painted up in the very incorrect and also IHC which you've seen before here on this channel they did an eight car set but they made it all one color, uh, so they're not completely correct. Uh, it's a nice stand-in, and you know, it was the best thing that I had for many, many uh, years now. But it is time for something completely proper to exist. So, Bachman announced probably well, over a year now. Uh, they're going to do these, and they did a five-car set of them. So um, the cars that they did, I'll take a look at each one. This is a coach. Got a baggage. Observation. And another coach. This is maybe a diner. Another coach. <clears throat> so we're going to get them all out of the box here and take a little bit closer look at them. Um, it says that these are supposed to be lighted also. Um, so we'll see how that works. Um, if they're going to be lighted, they should have some sort of flicker-free uh, circuit in there. Because um, if they don't have that, then that kind of takes away from a lot of the niceness of them being lighted. It's something you can overcome with a little bit of wiring and adding some capacitors, but I'd rather not have to do that. So we'll take a look at them next. Alright, so we're starting with the observation car here. And one thing I'm noticing with these, um, the lighting tone looks very nice. Um, there's this clicking noise. Something in the wheels there. And uh, while we got it off the track, we'll go ahead and take a look at the detail here. Would probably look a little bit nicer with some diaphragms on there, but you could add those if you really wanted them. There is some separately applied uh, grab irons there. Crisp paint job, uh, not a whole lot of underbody detail, but again, something you could add if you really wanted to. Um, in the back here, the markers are kind of fake here. They don't light up. That would be a really neat touch if it had those light up, but it doesn't. Um, the plastic couplers that come on these um, I think will be sufficient, being that it's only going to be a five-car train at this time, and even if I had some cars on, it's not like it's going to be that heavy of a train. So I don't really see a need to change those out. So we'll go ahead and... First, before I put it back on track, I'm going to give it a little bit of uh, some grease there and see if it gets rid of that clicking noise. So I'm going ahead and add the lubricant there and still getting that clicking sound. At higher speed, it's less noticeable, but moving along, you can definitely hear it. I don't know, maybe something that will kind of break in over time 
Anyways, we'll move on to the other cars here. So next we're taking a look at, I believe this is one of the coaches. Well, this one has a very peculiar sound to it. I'm going to give that one a little bit of grease too. And on this one too, it doesn't seem to help. Uh, these are not the freest rolling things out there, so that may have some effect on the amount of locomotive power you need to run these. We'll see. This one's kind of the same car and this one's quieter. And we'll throw on another one here. This one's very noisy. I'll go ahead and give it a quick dab of grease here. The wiper design on these for the electrical pickup is not what I would consider ideal. And I'll take a look at that. You can see here, basically the wiper just rubs up against the wheel. A lot of them have the electrical pickup on the outside here, which seems to usually work a lot better. And then we'll throw on the baggage car here, which feels kind of light. Uh, the weights of the other cars may be on a little bit on the light side, uh, this really feels light. I think this would definitely benefit from adding a little weight plate in there. Depending on how easy these are to take apart, not sure. And this one, of course, is not lit, so that may be a reason for a little bit less weight. So Bachman, when they sent out the email for these last week, uh, we're here in September of 2020. Um, they said these would work great with our Streamline K4. And that is correct. Uh, these debuted in 1938, and typically what would power them would be K4s um, of the Streamliner variant or duplex power, things like the S1, Q1, Q2. Um, the Turbine S2s may have had a run with these. Um, Probably most commonly, these ran with the T1 duplex. And also, uh, coming into Harrisburg, they would be running with GG1s. So at Harrisburg um, was where the electrified Pensy ended, so they would switch out the power from an electrified locomotive like the GG1 to something steam-powered, um, usually a T1. So we're going to test Bachman's uh, claim here, and we're going to back up our steam engine here. And we'll see if it can actually pull these. This is not a great pulling locomotive. Um, the review we did in the past kind of covered that. So we backed up and we're going to see uh, if this thing can really pull it.
pretty good. I don't notice any flickering with the passenger cars. And as we've documented before, this is not exactly the most perfect track. So if there was a problem, it would probably show up. And these seem to be doing just fine. So there we go, we made it a full lap around and it doesn't seem to have any problems pulling it. So it would appear these do match up pretty well with that Bachman K4 Streamlined. Uh, you can also run this of course with the new Broadway, which is right over there, uh, which I've had on a couple of the videos before. And that pulled this eight car train, so it would have no problems. Here we had a little bit of a derailment here. I'm not sure what the cause of that may have been. So just to give you a little rundown on the uh, running characteristics there, um, at higher speed, um, the clicking noises really do go away and you kind of just hear the noise of the sound in the locomotive uh, or the motor noise of the locomotive itself. Um, even at lower speed, I don't really think it's too noticeable. Um, something on maybe a setup with some road bed or something like that, this is a rather noisy track setup here uh, just because the tracks land straight down on plywood so it kind of makes a little more noise than what it would otherwise on a quieter setup you may notice that clicking even more um, again probably not a big deal um, i mean i'm happy that they do have lighting in them um, i think with you know walther's car or two added in with these and maybe one of the branch line cars and you have a pretty nice set um, so props to Bachman for finally coming out with these. Um, it's been a long time coming uh, that somebody did come out with these cars and do them properly. Um, so, you know, until someone does a better job, this is kind of by default the best thing that you can get for this. Unless, of course, you want to pay $700 a car for brass, but uh, that's not for me. Uh, this whole train, pretty much as it sits, is around probably 500 bucks. Uh, the train cars themselves are about the same price as the locomotive. Uh, you know, those locomotives you can find for 260, 270, the Bachman streamlines, or run with any other engines that you want to that are appropriate. Uh, the passenger cars here are around 50 bucks a piece, which, you know, for a comparable lighted Walthers, uh, which obviously the Walthers are going to be a little bit nicer. Um, if they made something like this, but generally it would probably cost about 30 to $40 more for something that's lighted. So, 
you got to kind of take that in mind when you're buying these. Um, so, you know, for the price to buy a lighted car, uh, that's not doing too bad. I think there's definitely some things that you can customize on these, um, specifically diaphragms. Um, even running on 32 inch radius here, which is what the outer loop is, um, they do seem to look a little funny kind of hanging out over the corners. Um, so these I would say are probably not small radius friendly. Uh, if you got 24 or below, um, I would I would probably even stick to 28 or larger. Uh, these don't even look perfectly happy on 32. So, you know, kind of the bigger the better um, that you can run these on. And, you know, comparably if you're running these with like a T1 duplex, you're going to want 30 inch or bigger radius anyway, just for that engine to really be happy. Uh, with K4s, you can get away with a little bit smaller radius, but it kind of looks a little bit ridiculous. Um, underbody details, you can certainly add those if it really bothers you. Um, and the underbodies are black, so it would be very easy to match that. So that's it for this one. Um, very happy with these. So I'm happy to have them in my collection. Um, something I really needed to kind of round out my Pennsylvania collection. Uh, it was a set of passenger cars I didn't have, and I think Raymond Lowy would approve. Thank you.